Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. It's Revelation 21. In Advent, while we await the arrival of Christmas, we are also reminded that we are awaiting the return of Jesus, a new heaven and earth, an end to death, mourning, crying and pain. We're looking forward mostly to the idea that we will dwell with God forever, that God's dwelling place will be among his people. In a sense, this week's passage brings us full circle to what we were considering in our first week when we thought about Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. It can be easy to treat our earthly life as the main event. And of course it is important, but there's something glorious beyond this. The best is yet to come. We don't know when Jesus will return, but we're told to be ready. If we can hold this in mind, it can help us to deal with life, whether life is going well or whether we encounter difficulties. This isn't and we aren't the finished article. We might prepare for our earthly future by studying or investing our money, planning, uh, investing in our career but how do we invest in our eternal future one of my friends used to call any cut or graze a there there because as a young child when he showed his mum a graze she would say there there if we have caring nurturing parents that's a really natural reaction how often were we as children comforted by an affectionate adult who would wipe away our tears and kiss our graces better? A kind and reassuring word that we'd be okay. Can you imagine life without death or mourning or crying or pain? God's comfort and reassurance is not based on wishful thinking, but on solid truth. Perhaps particularly for those whose life has been so difficult, this is an enormous reassurance. What would it be like to be comforted by God himself? For God to wipe away our tears. It matters that we hold this in mind because it changes how we relate to the here and now. It means that we can hold things a little less tightly. When things aren't quite right, we know that there's something better ahead. We don't need to live as people without hope. We began these four weeks by thinking about worship as hospitality, preparing room for Jesus in our inner world. Creation is God making room for us to be the object of his love. Jesus says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. It's in John 14. The only reason that we are able to consider that internal hospitality towards God is because God is working to create an eternal hospitality 
for us. He wants to be with us. And one day he will come back and take us to be with himself. Maybe the hope we have for the future can help us to enjoy him in the present. So let's prepare him room. <laughs>